Escalator going up Escalator coming down Well if you insist Then I can't resist your Escalator bitch Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to the Escalator Pitch Podcast. Woo! <laughs> yeah. It could be morning. It could be afternoon. Whatever, wherever you are, whatever time it is. Hello. Whatever you're doing. Because, you know, no one listens to a podcast and just listens. They're always doing something along. I like to think there's somewhere out there someone's taking a shit <laughs> while they're listening to us and... To, that someone's banging to this. Somebody's Somebody's, banging as, somebody is banging to this right now. There's like, there's like finger blast and booty holes going on. <laughs> there's so Dude. much going on. Uh, there's somebody pretending to work and like rubbing themselves under a desk. Uh, oh. That's everyone. That's everyone oh. listening to this is pretending to work and rubbing themselves under the desk. Oh, it's so hot. I'm already excited. <laughs> So this is the first episode here, and uh, so what we're going to do is kind of introduce ourselves and introduce the, uh, you know, aesthetic of the podcast, what we're trying to, what we're trying to accomplish. What this shit is. What is this shit? So, so Josh, who are you? I'm Josh Stifter. I am director, animator, uh, owner of Flush Studios, an animation company, a, a production company at this point. Um... I directed a movie called The Good Exorcist, and I was on a show called Rebel Without a Crew, and I just love, I love movies. So I am John Brennan. I produced a couple of movies for Troma Entertainment. I was Lloyd Kaufman's assistant for about four years, and then I got involved with The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs on Shudder. I wrote the theme song, and I've been on a couple of episodes, and that's about it. I'm also an aspiring screenwriter. I've never sold anything, but hey, you never know. Maybe this is it. Maybe all of our beautiful ideas here will be picked up. And uh, we'll become sort of rich. Every last one of them. I I imagine that every pitch that we put out there is going to get picked up, John. Every single one of them. And you want to know why? I'm fucking tired. I am fucking sick and tired of listening to people's podcasts. Everybody's like, oh, I'm so smart and funny. Well, you know what? We're smart, too. Just like Fredo. So we're going to do some awesome research we're going to share on our social media, which is basically across the board at Escalator Pitch. And then if you want to hit us up on email, it's Escalator Pitch Podcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your pitches. I mean, we're going to be pitching so much stuff like we're, today we're talking about Indiana Jones, right? Perfect. Perfect movies. They're, they're flawless. Indiana Jones 5 and 6. Written by John, one by John, one by Josh. I just see it now. It's written in the stars. I mean, he's going to be an older guy. Maybe we should make him impotent. Oh, but we'll get into that later. We'll yeah, get yeah, into yeah, that yeah, later. Yeah. First, the format will be a first segment with Josh and I speaking about an unproduced movie. We're going to get into some cool stuff like, who knew? Peter Jackson pitched the Nightmare on Elm Street sequel. That was an amazing idea, which basically led to him landing Lord of the Rings. Uh, hello? Hello? Who knew? Did you know that? Who knew? I didn't know this until I literally didn't know this until you told me. And now I've gone down the the rabbit hole of Nightmare on Elm Street and I'm super excited to do that episode. Yeah, and there's so many other things that were pitched for Nightmare on Elm Street. There's also a Wes Craven screenplay for Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 that was the the beginning of Dream Warriors and then our man Frank Darabont with Chuck Russell uh rewrote that which became the final movie Dream Warriors. So that's going to be another episode also, there's some great reference material. I've been reading this these books by this guy, David Hughes. I guess it's Hughes or maybe it's Hughes. H-U-G-H-E-S. Hughes. The Hugster. <laughs> David Hugster. Um, <laughs> two amazing books. The Greatest Sci-Fi Movies Never Made and Tales from Development Hell. These things are of such interest because I love this lost project kind of thing and there's so much information in these things and hopefully we could get him on the podcast and pick his brain at some point oh that'd be amazing so what we're gonna do here is basically we're gonna put out 10 11 episodes maybe a couple of bonus episodes a lot of people want to come on and talk about this stuff it's crazy it's so fascinating we I, this was the first day today as we did this episode i threw out a tweet just going like hey we're gonna be doing this podcast today and i'm super excited all of a sudden, I had messages rolling in from people saying like, oh, I really wanted to read that script and never have, or I've got it on my computer right now and I've just never taken the time to, the, to read it. And guess what? You won't have to after this episode. You'll be able to listen to all the fun facts right here. <laughs> right here, right now. Also, people are like, 
I don't know, bringing up where we're talking Indiana Jones and like, well, are you going to discuss the unmade Buckaroo Banzai? And, or are you going to discuss Alex Cox's script for Che Guevara biopic? I didn't even hear this. So there's so many things. And that's where the audience interaction comes in from you guys, all you out there. Hit us up. Hit up that email. Hit up the Twitter and let us know. Or come to John and I directly and just ask us questions or put something in our brains so we can start thinking, oh, yeah, I didn't know this existed. Let's try this one out. Totally welcome. But don't be a dick. I already see. I already know. Jeffrey, you're out there. Jeffrey and Jeffrina, the trolls who are going to come. And that's not the information that's correct. But there's so much information. We're just going to jam with it. And if we get it wrong... You need to shut your goddamn mouth and let us just keep talking. And then you can you can come on the show and correct us. But shut up. I'm tired. I'm tired of this shit. It's the first episode. I'm already I'm already fed up with the goddamn audience. I'm sorry. Who the hell is Jeffrina? Jeffrina? That's not a name. Is Jeffrina? Is it's Jeffrina Jeffrey and, and Jeffrina, their brother and sister. <laughs> their parents were idiots. And you know how parents oh, do that. God. So Jeffrey and Jeffrina, brother and sister trolls. They're, they didn't go with Jenny or Jessica or Jebra or something else. No. Jeffrina. Jeffrina. It's like Farina, but with a, <laughs> I don't know. What the hell is Farina? That's that like oatmeal stuff. I, di- I digress. Okay. So. I, I, I agree that we are, we, I, I, John doesn't welcome the trolls. I 100% do. Come to me instead. Be like, you fucking idiots. Because I instantly will just message you back. We are idiots. You win this round, troll. I don't care. Uh, whereas I'm on the opposite spectrum. I like to battle for years and years. He and... does. He, and he's good at it, too. He's good at it. But I, uh, yeah, so so come to us. I, we're going to get the trolls. We're going to get stuff wrong. But guess what? We're here to just talk about movies and have fun with it and read some scripts we maybe never would have read. Find out some trivia we maybe never would have found out. Absolutely. And again, we more than welcome anybody who wants to come on to the podcast and pitch. We're, we're pre-recording these, so there's plenty of time where we can add people. If you, We'll give you like two minutes. You come on, you pitch us whatever your ideas for whatever. You want to make a sequel to uh, the Rainbow Bright movie from the 80s, the animated thing. Go ahead. We want to listen to it, and then we'll either help you, we'll dissect it, or we'll just totally tell you it's a piece of shit and thank you very much. Go away. Right. Where it's it's kind of like the shittiest Shark Tank, where they can send in their pitches. We can we can hear them. We can't actually help them in any way. No, no, no one's we no one's help getting ourselves. a movie. <laughs> So we're we're the shittiest Shark Tank for filmmakers. But we're going to role play and uh, we're going to touch ourselves under the desk like the person that's at work right now. And uh, we're going to pretend that we're, you know, studio people. We're going to we're going to role play as the studio, as what we pretend we think it might be like in a room with big studio big wigs. It's going to be awesome. My dream is that we get like three pitches a week that we can go through and just just dissect and talk about laugh at Hell get a yeah. couple stupid ones get a couple that were like holy fuck that's a good idea and if you rate us five stars okay even if you think that this show sucks whatever you put in the little review five stars you say here's my rainbow bright my little pony crossover pitch we guarantee we will read it on there if it's a paragraph long we got it we got you and we'll get our intern to jerk you off under the table <laughs> intern mikey mikey the intern mikey you're jerking off people for that give five stars, okay? Okay, thank you. Mikey, shut the hell up. Go sit down. This son of a bitch, Mikey, <laughs> never shuts up. He chats like a box. Goddamn, Mikey. All right, so let's get into it. Basically, the movie that came out is Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I believe it was 2007. Yeah, the, the critically acclaimed, loved by the, loved by the fans. Everyone enjoyed this motion picture. It got seven theme parks. Oh, my God. Do you remember when this movie came out? I remember everybody was like, man, that was better than Raiders. Oh, God. <laughs> everybody walking out of the theater, every single person, when I saw it at the Arclight Cinema in L.A., Every single person was just ranting and raving about how goddamn good this movie was. Oh my god. It it could not have been more opposite. The the credits rolled and there was like there was like a lull of of pure almost anxiety. Like everyone was like what do I say? I can't say I hated this. Like people didn't know what to do and they walked out of the theater like did you you didn't you you didn't like it did you did you please tell me you didn't like it <laughs> well the great i think the greatest commentary on it was obviously the south park episode where um george lucas and steven spielberg 
do the accused scene on Indiana Jones against the pinball machine where they rape him. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> that right, kind exactly, of sums but... up everybody's feelings on it. I mean, you know, I, I was shell-shocked. I went with twice, actually. I didn't have enough uh, abuse the first time. And I went with another friend, and he was just like, in the middle, he just turned to me, and he goes, this is so boring. Yeah. So, okay, I saw it in the theater, and then maybe two years later, my wife had never seen any of them. She'd never seen an Indiana Jones movie. So I was like, well, I can't fucking marry you if you don't see Indiana Jones movies. So we watched all four of them. And at that point, it was a few years after Kingdom of the Crystal Skull had come out. And I'm like, maybe everyone was just, like, way too harsh on it. Maybe it was just ahead of its time. (laughs) I don't (laughs) know what I I thought. I will defend it. Like, okay, first of all, we are tiny pubic hair follicles on the vagina of Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. Those are gods. Truly gods in cinema. And no matter what they do, even if they make a string of shit movies for the rest of the time, they've still made some of the greatest movies ever made. So who are we to judge them? Right. I, I mean, I, I agree in the sense of some of Spielberg's movies are like, they age like a fine wine. Like they get better with time where I go back and I'm like, wow, this is way better than I even remember it. And some of them get worse with time, where I'm like, man, I can't believe I watched Hook so much, like, as a kid. And I liked Hook. I loved Hook. As a kid, I loved it. I mean, I loved it even into my, like, early adulthood. And then I tried to watch it. My, my son is really into Steven Spielberg right now. And we put on Hook, and we got, like, 25 minutes into it, and he's like, can, can, I, can I go play Minecraft or something? And I'm like, oh, but... You haven't seen the part where Robin Williams gets his dick sniffed by a flower. No, yeah, yeah, you can go play video yeah, games. Yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> but you were saying over a text that your your son, he's six, right? And he's already recognizing Spielberg's name. He is. My kid knows Spielberg. He knows him from men. He saw Men in Black. And, well, he had seen, uh, he, he was a huge fan of Ready Player One, believe it or not. It's a movie, movie made for. I dug that movie. I did, too, because I watched it with a six-year-old and was just like, oh, my God, it's references for him and references for me and a ton of fun. It's over the top, but in the most fun way possible. And then I uh, and I showed him Jurassic Park, and he loved that, of course, because who doesn't love Jurassic Park? And then I was like, what can I show him next? I feel like E.T. is a little too mature in some ways for him, and E.T. fucked with me as a kid, so I'm like, I'm not going to do that one, and obviously not Jaws. So I was like, let's try Indiana Jones. Kid fucking loved it. He loved it. It still hit just as hard as and me being able to watch it for the first time again through a six year old's eyes. I was like, "Oh, Spielberg's a god!" Like, what the how? How is this movie possible? Well, uh, also to to give credit where credit is due, of course, Lucas. But Lawrence Kasdan, you could feel his influence all over that puppy. It, there's a, an amazing thing that we'll share out. It's maybe a thirty page document of a story conference that Lucas. Spielberg and Kazdan had so cool. So That's amazing. Yeah. What a collaboration. Not to mention having Harrison Ford. Like just watching the movie again, I'm like, "Oh my god, I don't think we'll, we'll talk about this more later, I think, but I I don't think anyone else could have pulled that off at well, that time." Hey, from uh, Tales from Development Hell, I had heard this years ago, but there is a a uh, paragraph in here where they wanted Tom Selleck. Right, exactly. Yeah, I didn't know if that was something we were going to talk about later or if we could talk about that now. Let's, Let's just talk about, about it now. I mean, you look, they they said, uh, I think D- George Lucas said, I don't want Harrison Ford to be my Bobby De Niro. So they tested Tom Selleck with, of all people, Sean Young, it says in here, who was supposed to play or maybe was up for Marion. And um, then he, he was contracted to Magnum P.I. and he couldn't get out of it, so they went with Ford. And see, Ford brings a laziness to the character that I don't know if anyone else could pull off. It's just watching it with my son, we were both kind of, like, shook by the fact that he... It almost is like he doesn't give a shit about being there, but puts his all into every moment. I can't explain it, but it's like, no one acts like that. And it just, he pulls it off. Nobody can act like Harrison Ford. I mean, the guy has presence, but you're right. It's, it's such a laid-back approach to acting. But he still delivers all the emotional beats that you need, especially in a movie like this that's supposed to be a roller coaster ride. But he makes these little character moments come to life, and that's why he's also a movie god. Right, and those all, the the whole crew that came together on that first one is so great. Now with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I will defend. I told you over text. I will defend Spielberg. And whoever else designed the sequence where it starts in the diner and he tells 
uh, Shia LaBeef to punch the guy in the face who's a jock, and he's a greaser, and it starts the fight, which then leads to the campus chase in the car with the motorcycles. That sequence, I think, is on par with anything in the other movies. I will say it's it's actually the, the chase 